Hello there, welcome to the 40 plus woman. We're here again to give you wonderful information. If you're a woman out there in midlife, mm, you're in for something great. Today on the 40 plus woman, like we always do, we've brought information that's going to be beneficial to you as a woman in this stage of life. Now the 40 plus woman is an informative program. It is inspirational. It's a program like no other because we focus on women in this particular age group you might have been somebody laboring all your life using all your money to train your children which is legitimate but there is a time you've got to be strategic about your finances and that's what we're going to be talking about today how to take charge of your personal finance investment opportunities at this stage in life don't go away i'm going to be right back to introduce our guest for today my name is busola Chekede. it's nice to be with you Hello there, my name is Busola Jegede. I am a John Maxwell certified coach, a consultant, and a chartered accountant. For over 15 years, I've been working with women, helping them to discover their purpose, their vision, holding their hands, seeing them through turning their visions to profitable ventures. And it will be a delight to work with you. Do you feel unfulfilled? Do you feel that there is more to your life? Do you have a story to tell, a book to write, a vision to birth? Are you over 40 or 50? I can assure you that the second half of your life can be better than the first half. Why don't you sign up for my one-on-one -on -one coaching session or a strategy session? It will be a joy to work with you to reinvent yourself, to birth a new you. Welcome back to the 40 plus woman and like I said earlier today we have something interesting money 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 Everybody wants money money is useful to everybody and I'm sure somebody out there you're pulling up a chair calling somebody because we are talking about money and who is a guest today a vibrant woman who has been in this space for many years helping women yes she's passionate about helping other women in their investment decisions in their personal finance it is my pleasure to welcome to the 40 plus woman mrs adeshola adesha king thank you for having me ma thank you so much for coming to the 40 plus woman now adeshola uh, Shola, as she's fondly called, Adeshakin, is a personal business finance coach. She is a chartered accountant with over 20 years hands-on experience from a chartered accountant to another chartered accountant. How were those exams? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> now, she's passionate about helping people understand the make, manage, multiply money message and she also helps people to maximize their resources. And uh, she has a vision called the Smart Stewards, a financial advisory company. And uh, she's here to share with us on the 40 plus woman. Welcome, Sholai Dishaki. I'm glad to be here, ma'am. So from your um, many years in dealing with women, because we are focused on women, typically, you know, women tend to, uh, take financial market women generally take a back seat when it comes to a lot of issues my husband will handle it uh, you know but things are changing so what do you advise the woman in this special age bracket how should she manage her personal finance awesome i am glad to be here and um, interestingly I fall in that category because I clocked 40 last year. Wow. So it's such, um, you know, an opportunity and a privilege to be here. And then talking, you know, from one woman who is in her 40s to other women who are watching this. Uh, from my own personal experience, I think the best place to start from is to take financial responsibility. Mm. So I see that a lot of women are quick, you know, at pointing, accusing fingers. 
we make a lot of excuses you know oh it is my husband some of us will say oh my parents oh my children my family and then these days you hear a lot of people blaming the government <laughs> you know so i tell people there are three economies that should be of interest to you the first is your personal economy things within your control things you can do like savings and budgets and i'm going to go into that later then the national economy what is happening in your current geographical location the country you're located in mm -hmm. and then the third one is um the global economy because a lot of people are not interested especially women you know when we are when the news is ongoing and they're talking about this is what is happening economic policies around the world we just tune off mm -hmm. you know these things we're not should, interested these things should interest us because you see attaining financial success is usually a a function of things within your control and things outside of your control. Mm. Who would have thought that dollar would eat this year? You know, was that within our control? Definitely not. But we've got to still feed, we've got to still do things, we've got to still live life for mm. those who have children abroad and a whole lot. Mm. So take responsibility for your personal economy to start with. Your personal economy. economy. And that's a function I of like what that. you earn, mm. what you spend, what you invest, and all of those things so the first thing is take responsibility stop blaming people stop blaming the government and stop, stop being blaming, ignorant and stop being ignorant I, i'm going to dive deeper but the first thing that sh you should take away from this very first thing i'm saying is take personal responsibility mm. take personal responsibility now for any woman out there who is watching the 40 plus woman if you've always depend even if somebody is giving you house feeding money or housekeeping money You've got to be responsible. Right. Now, let's move on. Once a woman has now taken personal responsibility, she knows her income, expenses, how should she plan or appropriate resources. We want to go further from there. What else should a woman plan for financially? Right. So um, I usually tell people that there are three M's of money, three things to do to money. You make it, manage it, and multiply it. And that's what we all do. You see, the difference between the very wealthy people and those who are not wealthy, those who are struggling, is what they do around these three M's. Mm. When you make it, some people have the skills to make money. They make the money, no doubt. But they do not have the skills to manage money. Mm. And that's why some people, they end the salary. But, you know, two weeks after salary is paid, they're broke. And then they would say, oh, village people, this and that, you know. <laughs> so learn to make manage and multiply money so after personal responsibility number two is embrace financial literacy mm. how do i make more money right some people i know some people are watching this you already you know know how to make money you are earning a salary you have a business now for those who do not know how to make money how do i make more money how do i monetize my gift there's this book i tell people to read all the time it is called the cash flow quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki and he says you can make money from four quadrants. You mm. can be an employee and you're earning salary. Mm. You can be a self-employed person and then you're monetizing your talent. And then he says number three, you can be a business owner where you have a business and business is not brick and mortar. Business is your leveraging systems, leveraging structures, leveraging other people's time and you know resources. And then the last one is being an investor. So talking about money, earn money, learn how to make money from four quadrants, learn how to manage. So I'm going on to managing. Managing is a function of how you spend what you make, okay? So it's not about you make so much. You make so much money, I'm making so much money. How much of this money stays with you? Somebody says money is an excellent servant, but a very bad leader, mm. Francis Bacon. That's, that's a quote. You see, money, when you show your money where to go, your money would serve you well. Mm. They call money currency, derived from the word current. What is current? When you go to the seaside, you see current. It flows. It just flows. Money likes to flow. Money is very fluid. Mm. So if you don't tell your money what to do by managing it, by budgeting. It will go away. It will go away. So managing money is a function of you budgeting, telling your money, this is what I want you to do. Groceries. Uh, rent, mm. you know, and we're not exceeding that. And you know, we, we're not exceeding that. Mm. So, when somebody brings in an Ashwebi, you know what we call Ashwebi in this part of the world, the ceremonial attires, you're looking at your budget and you're like, girl, this is not fitting in. Mm. I'm going to have to pass on this 
this time around so managing money is you knowing how to save you know knowing how to budget i tell people in financial planning budgeting is simply saying 50 percent of my income will go into necessities what are necessities food groceries rent as the name implies need to have mm. then 30% can go into your savings and investing mm. and then the remaining 20% I tell people take care of yourself because the system is designed to take from you from taxes to rent to everybody mm. nobody cares about you you just realize you're 50 you're 60 you haven't done anything no saving you know so managing is you budgeting saying 50% mm. go here 30% go here 20% go there and then the last M is um, multiplying money mm. which is investing it's not enough to now manage, okay, saving, you know, budgeting and all of that. You must also learn to multiply your money. So in essence, that is financial planning. Getting familiar with your figures, you know, taking responsibility, acquiring knowledge around the three M's and putting those things to action. Wow, fantastic analogy there. So make money, manage money and multiply money. Now, um... When you're talking about, I want to take the multiplication yeah. because that's where a lot of women, because we are women, we have some peculiar hindrances. For instance, you want to invest, you want to buy some shares, you want to buy a property. The men can just get up and do that. Right. But when it comes to women, there may be considerations. Right. You want to get the buying of your spouse. Or your spouse may think that's not what we should do now. So how can a woman navigate around this encumbrances in order for her to achieve that uh, multiplication well, she desires? I, I love that question. And I think we should look at it from two points of view. I mean, there are women in their 40s who are watching this who are not married. Mm -hmm. You know, for people like that, I mean, you can wake up one day to say, or I want to buy land, or I want to do this and that. So for that, for those set of people, it is straightforward. And I'm going to leave you with an acronym called SGAR. It applies to you whether you're married or not. It applies to anybody who is interested in investing. But for women who are married, yes, I know that most times it's not as easy, um, you know, taking decisions uh, like a single person will do but I mean marriage is a beautiful thing and two are better than one so I think what works for me is communication so uh, I tell people in marriage I mean the roles are there and you you must know who is better in what mm. for a better part of my career my husband was the better money manager mm -hmm. so even though I was an accountant my finances were scattered it took a while for me to learn the dynamics of personal finance but so I mean in those days and I'm also sanguine which means I could go and see something <laughs> not in the plan I buy. And you say, but girl, you are, you are the accountant. She should know better. You know, but over time, so I, I allowed, I sort of surrendered. That, that's a very heavy word to use. Mm. But I just said, you know what? Rather than keeping a joint, no, we don't do joint account. We do what we call project account. Project whereby account. Where, where, when there's something to do, you bring in money, I bring in money, pull it together and it, execute. That's what works for you. Right. Exactly. So r rather than keeping the project account back then, I told him to keep it and execute because he was a better money manager. These days, we do equally well. So communication, mm. you know, so you want to invest, tell your spouse. Again, the dynamics are different because I have seen many, many examples. Some person, some spouse who knew about what the other person has and then there was there were issues so really this is not a marriage <laughs> counseling session yes. but talking about investments you know to get your spouse into whatever you're doing communicate mm. you see and then you see your way of life would also sort of buy their trust mm. if they know that the decisions you take all the time always end up moving the family forward they will believe in you exactly. you see so at some point my husband started to say yes i see that you're better with managing finances each time i say oh this is some interesting investment have you done your due diligence are you okay with it go ahead yeah. and we'll do it so communication is, leave, important. Uh, is important leave a good example you can't be saying let's do investment do invest. you, are, you, are the, you are the one not planning you are the one always buying these buying that not prioritizing the things that are important yeah. now let me go back to the sgar things uh acronym that i said before you invest whether married or you know as a single lady the S stands for your financial situation. Your financial now, situation. situation. You can't be doing what others are doing because they are doing it. 
somebody who is earning a million naira per month can afford to play around with cryptocurrency play mm. around with some other things but you are earning fifty thousand. you can't be investing the same way mm. so your financial situation will determine what you are putting your money into so when they bring an investment somebody is you know trying to pressurize you ask them have you done it mm. how much do you earn? if you want me to put all of my salary in these things or in this particular investment you know i have to consider what i have to invest mm. the second thing will be the goals mm. before you invest consider your goals our goals differ per time you have a friend who is not married and you are married you have three children you can't invest the same way because exactly. you are thinking of okay children's school fees you're thinking of you know children's school or you know so know your goals and i tell people break your goals into short term things you need to do within a year mm. mid-term things you need to do within two to five years and long term things you need to do beyond five years so consider your goals the next thing will be age i'm glad i'm talking to women mm. in their 40s let me tell you going at those days where you will think oh 40s yes they say life begins at 40 but at 40 what can i do there are so many things you can still do mm. right. that if, you can still do if i said mm. now you do not have anything i tell you you are you are one of the luckiest people on earth because you can start from anywhere. You can start. These principles work. Mm. And don't forget life is governed by principles. If you start to make, manage, and multiply your money well, you will build wealth. Okay, so it's never too late. So your age um, will determine also the kind of things you're investing in. Mm. You can't invest the way a 20-year-old is investing. Exactly. They've been shouting crypto, crypto. Crypto is not for everybody. Even though, yes, the future of, of money is technology. Mm. But you can't be putting your ad end money when you're approaching retirement into crypto. Mm. Because once it sometimes it just falls or stops. Yes. I'm not saying don't buy stocks, but I'm just saying these are the things to consider before you start to invest. Mm. And then the R will be your risk temperament. Mm. The way we invest will differ because of our risk temperament. Some people are able to take on more risk. We call some people they are conservative, some people are moderate, some people are aggressive. So these SGR factors are things you need to consider. And that's why I tell people you are different. Don't do things because everybody is doing it. Mm. So in the world of investment, consider these four things and then apply them to your investments. Wow, that's so loaded. S-G-A-R, right. your situation, your goals, your age, and your risk temperament. And you did, you did justice to that question because communication is very important. So for any 40 plus woman out there, get your husband's uh, agreement discuss with him because I know that's a question most people will be asking I want to do this I don't know whether and uh, if you're a woman of faith pray about it and there will be a way so let's move on from there um, having spoken you were mentioning that age is a critical factor you can't start investing long term at this age there are certain things you need to invest on. So what would you, how would you advise a woman who is already 40, 50, maybe somebody's working, looking ahead to retirement? What are the kind of ways a woman can position herself financially so that when she doesn't have the energy, for instance, even if you're in business, you're jumping up and down, you go to Dubai, you buy clothes, you bring it, you sell, and you, you are now looking at the clock. I won't be able to do this in the next 10 years. How can a woman position herself financially? Okay, so two things. Um, have the future in mind all mm. the time. Mm. You see the reason why sometimes a lot of women, we take spontaneous and impulsive decisions regarding our finances is because we're not thinking of the future. Mm. So your first son is 10 and you're thinking that our uni is still very far. Mm. Uh, no, uni is still very far. But six years, think about where you were six years ago. So mm. the days, you know, they move so slowly, but the years fly by right. so soon. So for every woman watching this, please have a long-term future perspective in mind. Mm. Whatever you're doing now, have the long term in mind. And the second thing I would like to say is secure the bag. So it looks like um, a cliche, but it's not a cliche. Now, my own, you know, thoughts about securing the bag is ensuring that your cash flow is rock solid. And that's why I mentioned that book by Robert Kiyosaki. These days, I, I teach people explore multiple sources of income. Mm. Now, people will say, but how do I want to do multiple sources of income? I tell people, your expenses have multiple outlets. Mm. You're paying for you your children, you're again. paying for rent. So if expenses, mm. and by the way, expenses are sacrosanct. Whether you're working or not, you will spend money. Mm. Whether you're working or not, your children will say, mommy, you have been good, we won't be hungry in the next three days. 
They, your landlord won't say, ah, you have been a very good tenant for 10 years. Don't Stop pay. Parents. Don't pay. You see? So expenses, are, even a, a new baby would spend money. A dead person spends money because they will have to put the person in much So if expenses are so sacrosanct, then explore multiple sources of income. And that's why I'm mentioning that book again. About three or four years ago, I was, I had about maybe 12 sources of income. Wow. Yes, yes. But these days I've tried to streamline it. The goal is that at least daily there must be an alert in your mm -hmm. bank account. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ways to secure your cash flow because it is with your cash flow you can buy assets. It is from your income you can invest. If you are not making income, you can't steal money to invest. So secure the bag in such a way that cash flow is coming in at least regularly, monthly. You see, either from you know consulting and then you're earning a salary, mm -hmm. or as an employee you're earning a salary, or you are monetized, you have your own gift and talent, or you're doing business. And business mm -hmm. could be a coalition of structures. You know how to do something, I know how to do something. We combine efforts. During COVID, a lot of people did so many partnerships. So collaboration is the new gold, mm -hmm. you see? So, and then you can also invest. So um, I think cash flow is key. Think long term, you know, keep acquiring knowledge, um, keep earning more, keep managing your expenses. I tell people, I don't teach people not to spend. You have, you have to spend, but you must spend smartly. And then leverage technology. This is key. This is the age where leverage technology. <laughs> technology is key. You can say that You again. can ma make money on your phone. You can do WhatsApp. I mean, my very first set of trainings a few years ago went WhatsApp, and I was charging two five per person. Apart from my data, I wasn't paying for anything. But these days, we have taken it online. We have our own academy. We do stuff. And our courses, some of them go for as high as $1,000. Do you see leveraging technology? Yeah. So um, leverage technology. Don't say, ah, internet is evil. Oh, I don't know how to use. Learn how to use it because that's where the money is. With your phone, you can learn to make, manage, and multiply money. These days, you can buy shares. U.S. stocks, fractionally, Amazon stocks, Google stocks, and mm. all of those stocks, $10 per month, $20 per month using your phone. Okay, so secure the bag, leverage technology, make sure that uh, you keep acquiring knowledge. Don't be disinterested in what the economy is saying or what the government is saying or what the president of the world is saying. Mm. You must keep an eye you know, on what is happening and keep your ears on the ground. You must learn because at the end of the day, it affects your personal economy. Hmm. You know, this is deep, this issue of uh, leveraging on technology. A lot is changing. So it's important for women to educate themselves. for your family. Blissful Honey Beans, hygienically packed in 2 kg and 1 kg packet. Stone free and weevil free. Prostrate to your pot and cook. Stress free and convenient. Order online and it will be delivered anywhere in Lagos. For other locations, call 70 Blissful Honey Beans. No stress. Welcome back to the 40 Plus Woman. My name is Busola Jegede and I have a wonderful colleague in accountancy. <laughs> and there is this thing about accountants, this joke that we're always asking for receipts. <laughs> As somebody will buy grand notes, you say go and bring receipts. Why? It's just talking about accountability. Yeah. And for us as women, how can we be better accountable when it comes to personal finance? Or business finance something I find women do is even when your spouse helps you to set up a business uh, a lot of people when they want to pay their rent they don't have enough money mm. 
and that shows that that business is not you know there's a lot of leakage right. so what are the things we can do to prevent leakages in our finances because if we can prevent leakages like good budgeting and all that but what are the other things we can do so that this money will not just fritter away even as we're thinking about having multiple sources of income so i think it's largely personal and it has to do with the mindset so um, me, 15 years ago, I was earning about 500,000 per month and I was always very broke. Mm. But these days, I mean, sometimes I even forget money in my account. Mm. What has changed? My mindset. Mm. You see, so accountability, a lot of people, when they hear the word accountability, they think it is external. It has to start from, even if you call 20 people and you decide to make yourself accountable to them. If you haven't done an inward or internal work, you will fail with those people. So, I mean, sit yourself down. I tell people, sit down with your finances. Mm. Look at yourself eyeball to eyeball. Money, you're a tool. You are meant to help me. I will help you also. Let's work together. Let's partner. Do you see? Resources are diverse in nature. So mm. when you adopt the right habits, mm. it's like you saying, I want to work out every day. Do the same with your finances. Why must I know how to manage my money? To give me peace of mind. You don't want the landlord pulling you. You don't want your and children's school fees. You know, ask people asking you, you, you are owing somebody, you see them coming, you go like that. It's not a good way of living. Mm. So when you settle your bills, when everything is under control, you live a peaceful life. No high blood pressure because of money issues. So be accountable, first of all, to yourself. Learn the right habits. I love the book Atomic Habits. Uh, mm. I can't remember the name of the author I mean, right now. But you see, Atomic Habits, fantastic. Learn the right habits. Mm. Learn to say no. Learn, learn to say no. Learn delayed gratification. <laughs> Sometimes I tell people, if you are so much under pressure to buy something, give yourself the 24-hour rule. Mm. I won't Think buy it Think about now. it. Sleep on it. Yes. If I feel like this is the same way tomorrow, then I will buy. Most times by the next day, that urge would have died. You see, so be accountable to yourself. Then get people to be accountable to. Maybe some trusted friend or somebody, might be your spouse. Please, I want to be accountable. And you must be ready to open up to the person, but please make it a trusted person. Mm. You see, but largely it's on you. And it goes back to also budgeting. What am I making? What am I spending? What, what, Most what, people spend more than they yes, need. Yes, live, for a miracle. live within your means. You know, you see, from my experience, when you get better with these things, your life will get better. More money will come to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the parable of, of the talent. One got five, one got two, one got one. The one that had five worked with it. The one that had one went to bury it. And they collected his own and gave it to the person who had so much so and who much. knew how to manage it. So when you know how to manage money and your resources more will come to you mm. that's what has happened the with rich me. get richer right wow fantastic it's like we should just go on and on but we have to round up right now yeah. and um, i would like to have your final thoughts and final advice to any 40 plus woman out there on how to be a better manager of money in addition to everything you have said Beautiful. I'm just going to summarize what I've said. And I'm saying this from a place of experience, from a place of passion. It is not too late. Mm. You can build wealth. A lot of billionaires overseas, some of them started to build wealth from their 50s, 60s. Mm. My own father became a millionaire for the first time when he was about 56. Do you mm. see? So when you read about these people, don't beat yourself up. When you make mistakes, pull yourself again. Start all over again. You know, and then just take responsibility. Nobody's going to do it for you. You've got it. Wow. You've got it. I'm sure every 40 plus woman out there, you are now spurred to make the best of your personal finance. It's been wonderful having Mrs. Shola Adishakin today. Thank you so much for coming, for your patience on the set. And um, we are looking forward to another vibrant time on the 40 plus woman. And so for every woman out there, be intentional about your finances. Yes, because it is important. You can join our conversations on the 40 Plus Woman, uh, the Facebook page. You can join immediately. We've got a community out there. We have case studies, interesting stuff where we encourage one another. Our Instagram page is called the 40 Plus Woman. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Jekete Busola. This is how far we can go on this episode. Thank you very much. And thank you. Mrs. Shola Adishaki. Thank you. Bye for now.
So there you have it on the 40 plus woman today. We've been talking about how to manage your personal finance. And our guest has been wonderful. Don't forget the three M's of money. Make money, manage money, multiply money. It's important for you to be accountable. It's important for you to plan for tomorrow. You've got to be good with budgeting. Yes, so many things she said today on the 40 plus woman show and for every woman out there it is never too late for you to start building your personal finance or your wealth even though you're 40 or you're 50 it's never too late as long as you're intentional my name is Busola Jagged and it's such a joy being with you remember to join me on social media Facebook Instagram and if you want to send me an email transformationsbj at gmail.com bye for now see you You were blessed beyond the cars by the power of the cross, so don't give.